Hey guys, this is David T from Field Sports Scotland and I'm coming to you with another episode just to talk about stocking. Now, there's been a lot of talk lately and a lot of questions asked is how do you get into stocking? And there's a lot of myths on regards to what you need to start stocking and what you don't need to get start stocking. And genuinely, a lot of misadvice because a lot of the people who are in the stocking industry have been in the stocking industry a long time and that's not so it's not so much it is their fault the problem is is that over they tend to forget over a long period of time they have accumulated lots and lots of equipment and they've been able to either budget or they might be well off that that is that stocking can be quite as expensive as you want it to be and a lot of guys will spend an absolute fortune on equipment that they just genuinely don't need or they could have got for a lot cheaper and first of all we're going to talk about clothing now I don't use expensive clothing I go through maybe one or two pairs of trousers a year and each pair of trousers costs me about 30 pounds now I try not to spend any more than the 30 pound mark on a pair of trousers and the reason for this is because it doesn't matter what pair of trousers you've got on my fat ass if I am about to fall off my quad or if I have to climb a fence with a barbed wire on it or something like that or up a deer fence or whatever I'm going to rip the middle off them I am going to rip the crotch off them so if I decided that every year I was going to spend £450 on a pair of Harkila trousers or something like that I'm going to be I'm going to be skint I really am so a cheap pair of trousers now I always go for lightweight and dry quick drying sorry lightweight and quick drying over waterproof and insulated the reason for this because if you're out on in the field for long periods of time and you are trying to um, be quiet waterproof trousers are not quiet the other thing about it is thicker trousers insulated trousers tend to hold in more moisture which makes them heavy and uncomfortable and that makes for really really bad stocking so you 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 want to be try and be as comfortable as possible so a little bit of bagginess and or a little bit of looseness and um and quick drying lightweight trousers are perfect and a lot of guys are saying well look what happens if you're caught out in a long period of time in the snowstorm or whatever and i've been caught out in snowstorms before i've been to the point where myself and my colleagues or whoever have been with us that have been totally covered with snow now that's where your jacket comes into more important because your jacket holds in uh, most of your heat the biggest another thing about thicker trousers is that your biggest enemy when you're stocking is sweat it's not the rain and the elements coming in your enemy is sweat coming out because you then you're feeling moisture right where your skin is and to be fair, it does what sweat does the job of cooling you down. That is what its job is. And it sits in the two or three layers of skin that it comes from and it really can knock you for six. It really can make, put a chill right into you. So lightweight, quick drying trousers are the best. Loose as well, just to make sure that you can get over those uh, over those styles or over those deer fences or barbed wire fences or even when you come off the quad you're not going to and you do the splits you're not going to cause yourself uh, a little bit of an embarrassing moment then we're going down to jackets now jackets slightly different um windbreaker style jacket is actually better than say a really really thick thermal jacket again you don't need to go over the top with that either um the the jackets that i wear i wear a 45 pound smock I, I tend to wear layers so i would wear if it's real cold outside i'd wear one of those cheap ass thermal um bottom layer with a t-shirt over top and then i'd maybe put my hoodie on and then i'd put like the mossy oak jacket or or a deer hunter jacket on that costs about 30 or 40 pounds now um 
I do have a smock that I really like and sometimes I'll wear that as an over jumper over my hoodie and that is perfect even then for, for stocking and things. So again it's loose, um, not so much quick drying but more windproof and waterproof but not noisy. And again you don't need to spend £500 on a jacket. Now I know there's guys out there who can afford it who will quite happily go and pay £400 for a pair of trousers and £400 for a, for, for a, jump, a jacket and £200 for a jumper. It's honestly, it, it, it's not worth it. It really isn't because it's all going to get damaged at one, at one point in time. If you're a serious stalker and you're spending a lot of time in the wood, I spend a lot of time in the wood, I spend a lot of time on the hill, I spend a lot of time outside, I spend a lot of time walking through clear fells and I spend a lot of time being absolutely wet and miserable because of the fact that I'm doing it every single day. But if you're just a recreational stalker and you're only going out maybe once, maybe twice, maybe even three times a year, you're not going to spend £800 on your outfit just for a jacket and a pair of trousers. So I would suggest shop around and look for good comfortable clothing at a low price. A lot of guys now are moving towards the, the mountaineering and the, the outdoors market. Regatta and people like that do good base layer jackets. They do um, and they're comfortable and easy to move in. So go for that. Don't, don't go for tons of money. So to be fair most of the time, other than, except for my boots, most of the time the clothing that I have on me costs under under 100 pounds and I'm going to be fair it's not a fashion contest you, you're going to be crawling through peat bogs and rubbish and absolute horrendous puddles of mud and god knows what and there's possibly fertilizer or something in so your clothes are going to get wrecked and the more, and the more you wash them the more wrecked you're going to get so genuinely buy something cheap, especially if you're only going out for two or three, four stocks a, week, four stocks a year, you know. One thing I will suggest though is don't really scrimp on in regards to your boots. Now there is a lot of guys out there that will buy ex-military boots, you can pick them up for a uh, um, for under £100, under £50 sometimes and they are genuinely quite good. You've got the he uh, Hex and you've got Altbergs and you've got uh, various other boots that are used military wise and they are genuinely quite good. There is a problem with them though. They're uncomfortable for long periods of time until they break in. So don't think that you're just going to pick up a pair of boots off uh, eBay or off a, a army, a, an army surplus store and you're going to put them on your feet and you're go going to get used to them straight away. It's not going to happen. Some of them are very uncomfortable to start off with. Now genuinely I would stay away from some of the higher end boots as well because there seems to be a lot of problems with the manufacturing. Now I, I, for a long period of time a lot of my colleagues and a lot of my friends were using Les Chameaux, uh, the GTXs, but they were starting to show quality issues in regards to the loops or, your, um, or various other. Now I wear, um, I'll show you the older ones because these are the ones I'm still wearing three years down the line. Yes they're starting to show a bit of wear and a bit of whatever. Um, these were out the other day. Getting to the camera. These are Bested, uh, Bested BG3 Explorer boots. Um, I actually got contacted a few years ago by uh, Ballast Tech in Ireland. Um, the guys said to me, look, I, I was complaining. That, I'm going to be honest, I, I was complaining. I had a um, and the guy and people who have um, followed me for a lot of years now and my reviews will know this. I, I was complaining that I couldn't get a pair of boots that were that I'm paying two, three hundred pounds for to work for my work. So I bought a pair of Le Chameau and they lasted six weeks, six to eight weeks. Um, I've had Harkila um, Pro. Um, Gamekeeper Pro ones, they don't last at all and if you ask anybody, don't buy them. The reason for it is uh, there's a nickname in the Highlands for Herkula bits and that's called Russian bits. The water rushes in the front and comes out the back and it doesn't keep your feet dry either. Um, even with the flaws in these ones, three years old and constant daily use, I'm still, my feet are still dry and I, 
and just the other day there I was dragging through burns and and rivers and stuff and it's been pretty wet recently and uh, these are still dry now I do have a a newer pair that, I, that I'm wearing as well but they're not really getting warm for work they're really getting worn for when it's snowing and stuff like that I'm going to try and keep these good for as long as possible um, um, so I do have a newer pair but these are the ones that I'm most comfortable in at the minute now the good thing about these Bester boots I have to say is that there is no breaking there is no uncomfort uh, you, you've got comfort from uh, the get go from from day one you've got comfort so goodbye Bester boots uh, I think Finning Game and in, in, uh, in Dumfries and Galloway I think it is or the Borders somewhere they do uh, they, they do the boots and you've also got Ballast Tech in Ireland and there's various other people now Bester boots are really coming into its own so they're the BG3 Explorer boots but I do suggest again shopping around a lot of the military surface stuff are quite good and um, I have to I have to be honest that it's all to do with your feet as well. Um, please, if you're going out for your first stock, don't wear something that you're going to be uncomfortable in. It's not worth it, it really isn't, because it's just going to make your stock absolutely horrendous. And sometimes you could be walking up to 10, 15 miles and you don't even know it, you know, you don't realise it. Or you're crawling for four or five hundred yards over a hillside or whatever, it becomes diff difficult. Now, another thing that uh, clothing wise that I do suggest is don't go crazy on big thermal socks and stuff like that. Just wear a normal pair of socks. Um, some of them are comfy, your big ghillie socks are comfortable and things like that. But again, they can be expensive. You could be talking £40, £50 pound for a pair of socks. Do you know what? I, I haven't used anything special in a good few years. After I got a, good, uh, a decent pair of boots that kept my feet dry all the time, I never needed any more than your normal pair of sports socks that you that um, that you get out your average sports shop for about a pound for well, I think it's about three pound for for ten pairs or something stupid like that. So again, shop about. You don't really need to change your attire, clothing wise, too much. Now equipment. Now this is the big deal. This is the this is where the money is, and I am a bit miffed at the advice that some people give. Now if I was to take you into a gun shop tomorrow, no matter if it was the best gun shop in the world, and I know some of the good, uh, I've been in some of the good ones, the first thing they're going to say to you, they're not going to ask you what your budget is. They want to sell you the most expensive thing that you've got, that they've got. Now, it's all well and dandy, those rifles are very good, very good quality and may last you a lifetime. But sometimes guys just don't have two to three thousand pounds to spend on a rifle. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, my very, very first rifle um, that I shot a deer with was a Parker Hale. It was older than I was and it still shot straight. And I think it was about 150 quid, 120 quid or something like that. Now, you get a lot of CZ packages. Uh, just because it's second hand, don't miss, uh, dismiss it. Um, CZ packages, you can get packages with scopes and everything for under £500 and moderators and stuff like that all on there. Just check the quality of the crowns, make sure there's no rust in the barrels and the breeches and stuff like that. And do a bit of ammo testing and see if you can see if it shoots straight. As long as it shoots straight and it's safe, then you're going to kill deer with it. And you might, again, if you're a recreational stalker that's only shooting maybe three deer a year, that's a whole different matter. If you do have to buy new, I do suggest um, a couple of brands like Tika, uh, they're very good value for money. Browning are very good value for money. I'm not a big fan of the Howas. Uh, we had a Howa and uh, the barrel corroded very quickly. Uh, didn't really cope with the wet too much. Um, it wasn't a straight off the shelf uh, rifle either because it was. we bought it with a Hogue stock and then we realised that you couldn't use a bipod on it because the Hogue, Hogue stock was too flexible and it was knocking off zero all the time and then it became really... It, it, we were just putting more and more money into it so an £800 package turned into something like £1,700 by the time you changed the stock and by the chain, time you worked through all your ammo and stuff like that to make sure things were working. It was just silly, it really was. So, 
I would stay away from the Howards. Um, but Tika, uh, if you get a good sour or you get a good um, a man liquor or something like that, you will get a, a lot of good pa packages out there that would really, really do you for your whole life stocking if you're just a, a, a starting off as a recreational stalker. While we're talking about rifles, we'll talk about calibers and what's the ideal caliber for you stocking. Now, a lot of get, there is always going to be a lot of talk about calibers, and there'll be a lot of people who will disagree with me. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you've got no choice. If you want to do deer stocking in Scotland and you want to shoot anything above roe deer in Scotland, you need to have over a 240. So, for most people who maybe want to do maybe do a baby i don't know four or five days stocking a year or or take that odd uh, recreational stock every so often you might want to think about a 243 it's a very very versatile round when it comes to um bullet grain bullet size the only problem is it can get fussy on ammo sometimes it doesn't like the heavier cut the heavier size and legally you need to use a 100 grain bullet in in scotland but arguably if you're going to be shooting more vermin than what you would be deer and you only can afford one rifle i would say a 243 would be a good middle of the road rifle however anything above 243 can be good now there is a mid-range where you have your uh, 243 and then your uh, um, your 2506 and your 6.5 creedmoors lapuas and various others and your 270 and your 308. Now that, that kind of bracket is probably the best um, area where you can mix and match your bullets from about 100 grain to 100, 150 grain. Now, you're not going to do a huge amount of damage on a roe deer. I, I, I've shot roe deer, I've shot foxes, but I've shot roe deer with uh, the 270. And you've got to be a little bit careful with the 270 because if you quarter a roe deer or if your bullet placement is not quite right, you could do a lot of meat damage. And I have done in the past, and it is basically schoolboy errors, a beast quartering on you or turning at the last second and things like that it is it is a big deal so that lower smaller caliber the 243 will do a little less damage uh, than um than say those bigger ones at 270 308s or whatever now the other thing about it is the 243 is not a great long range gun, so if you want to spend your days at the range, you will get out to five, six hundred yards, no problem with the, with, with the 243. So it can be quite, um, it, can, it can be quite a versatile round. However, as I said, look at that mid range bracket of uh, center fires. Obviously, you can't go lower. Some of your, um, if you're row stalking and it's only going to be a row stock, row Chinese water deer and um, and uh, uh, munt jack and things like that yeah think about your 2250s or your 223s or something like that or your 220 swifts and things you 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 will get some good performances out of that and they're also good vermin control rounds as well they're good for foxes and stuff nice fast small rounds that go out to maybe well i shot a 223 out to 1200 yards when i was in the states so they do go long they can go a long way so it, it's all about it's not just about caliber it's also about bullet choice as well now one thing i am going to suggest is and please don't say this to your uh, feo or whatever the firearms officer that comes around and checks uh, tells you gives you suggestions where you put your cabinet and things like that or does your risk assessment or whatever don't do, don't be stupid like some people and ask for a 338 Lapua or a 300 Win Mag or, or any of those massive calibers. Unless you're wanting to actually do that kind of specialised shooting, you, you don't really need it. And, and if that's what you're going to ask for, for, uh, for say, Rodier, um then you're kind of showing your naivety uh, to that officer and he might just say well I'm sorry I'm not giving you that caliber and that has that does happen quite regularly so just be mindful of the UK licensing laws and stuff like that and think about what you're actually shooting now don't get me wrong if you want to get into the target sector and you want to shoot some of those big calibers just remember they're 
I'm not giving you advice on them because they're big expensive rounds. A 338 Lapeur can be up to £15 for a round or a fiver for a round and a sore shoulder at that. It's it's all fun for an afternoon sto uh, sorry, an afternoon at the range, but um, not if you're not for if you're stocking a Rodier or a Sika even or something like that. It's just too much kill. But each to their own in the end. So there we go, talk about the rifle. Now uh, just for a wee bit of nosiness, this is a 6.5 Creedmoor. This is not a main rifle. Now, we're talking scopes. Now, on this, I've got a £1,500 Zeiss V6. And I, I, those of you who follow my uh, reviews noticed that I did actually um, review the the 56, the, the Times 56 version of this scope with the SV locking turrets and I fell in love with it. So we decided that we would invest in one for the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now you don't have to spend £1,500 on a scope. Um, the Creedmoor is a bit of a specialist calibre for us anyway because uh, um, it, it does shoot long range but it's actually very low damage on, on smaller deer and it still takes down the bigger deer very easily. But you don't need to pay £1,500 for a scope. You can, some of the best scopes for stocking are your fixed power scopes. Now whether that's 6x42, you get a lot of Kallis and Swarovskis and things like that. Quite cheap, now we're talking £150-£250 second hand. It's, very very cheap in regards to that kind of top glass. Um, 7x50s you can pick up a good 7x50 Miopta for around the, the £200 mark and your 8x56 Schmidt and Benders for instance wow what value you get for that for under £400 brand new in some places. Some places are selling these with the traditional classic reticles at £395. Now if you want an eight, uh, if you want an 8 power scope which is extremely low light efficient then that's what you want to go for. You uh, Under £500 and under and if you're paying two, three £300 for your, your, your rifle you could be talking a package that is well under £1000 and that will get you stocking. That will get you shooting deer legally and safely anywhere in the UK. And that is all what it's all about. It's all about you getting your feet on the ground and stocking into deer and gaining experience and gaining that kind of knowledge and learning from your mistakes and learning your rifle, your caliber, your bullets and stuff like that. But you don't need to spend a fortune in doing it. The next thing is again, it's optics. You need a good pair of binoculars. Now, I don't use top of the range binoculars. I do test top of the range binoculars and I have to say if you have got £1,700 I have to say your Zeiss uh, Victory HTs are amazing. But you don't need to spend that kind of money and on a daily basis I use a pair of Baron Stroud binoculars that cost me less than £100. And the clarity is well up, with it, up there with those uh, optics that are ranged about five, six hundred pounds. So you don't really need to go for your big brands if you're on a budget. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of you guys will be coming into the stocking world and you will have lots of hopes and dreams on what equipment you want to buy and some people have unlimited budgets and some people don't and things like that. I'm telling you, as a, as a father of quite a lot of kids and um, and I'm constantly paying money when a shopping bill at the end of the week is £400 just to feed all your kids, then the last thing you want to be doing is going and spending £3,000 on, on a pair of binoculars, £2,500 on a pair of binoculars, or even £1,750 on a pair of binoculars. So, shop around, have a go to the shop, have a wee look, and don't be afraid to buy second hand. That is the big thing about this. Do not be afraid to buy second hand. Look at the item, make sure it's working, make sure that the glass is clean and things like that. But you'll get a lot of good second hand items there for about 200, 300 pounds. However, again, you can buy brand new for under 100 pounds if you pick the right brand. And I do suggest Baron Stroud. Now, 
I, I, I've been using them for years and I still use them and I've had guys who use Swarovskis and yeah they're done. The Swarovskis and the, your Zeiss are so clear and low light capabilities are amazing. Yes you're going to lose clarity at long range, yes you're going to do va cause various problems with it but for the price and for what you're going to be doing for to identify a deer at two three hundred yards to to spot deer for long distance now I spot deer up, um, up to uh, up to three quarter of a mile away easy on the open hill and stalking into them and it's, you don't do your identifications until you've fully stalked in. Now a spot and scope, I don't have one sitting here, I usually do, a, a good spot, little spot and scope as well if you could pick one up of them for about 80-90 quid that would be ideal. Don't get your cheap ass rain scopes that you get out of Aldi's or Lidl's and things like that because they're awkward to carry, they're big and bulky and you won't be able to use them out in the open hill. So you need a, something, a slim line, either retractable or multi-tier multi, multi -tier scope or uh, uh, or you get a fixed one like I've got a Nikon, um, a Nikon one, I, I, I can't remember what the name of it is, picked up for about 150 quid. But that's, again, it all mounts up and you're saying, well, he's saying it's only 150 quid. Yeah, that is, I'm saying it's only 150 quid because that's the budget I'm on. Now, you'll get guys who'll give you advice for all this equipment, but they'll be talking £500 a, a unit. They'll be talking £1,500 a rifle. They'll be talking um, Z6i scopes and... Uh, massive powerful scopes that you don't need and Swarrow binoculars or Zeiss binoculars or whatever at £1,750, £2,000, £3,000 we're talking mega money you know that salaries can't cope with the amount of money that you get uh, uh, that you can put into this so again shop around and work to your budget don't don't listen to the guys who you say where you go onto a forum and says £500 I've got this to spend what do you suggest N I can almost guarantee you I will guarantee you you will get the guys that say well if you save a little longer and you put a little bit more money into it you can get this I know what you're getting at when you're saying £500 that's because £500 is all you're going to ever have to spend on that piece of equipment and that is and you, you, that is what you think is the maximum budget you'll ever be able to afford for that that piece of equipment. So, listening to someone say, oh, well, if you pay £1,200, you can get this item. Well, we all know you can get that item if you pay an extra £700, but I don't have that extra £700. So, again, don't need to force yourself on that. Just think about your products and shop around. Um, I'm not going to sit here and show you all the stuff that I've got because I've gathered it for over the last 10 years in regards to the equipment that I've got and I have scrimped and scraped for most of it and I have sold on stuff and upgraded and things like that and I am starting to get to a point in my uh, where I've got everything I possibly need except for a few bits and the bonus condition is, uh, is something at the minute. But we'll not go down that road because I'm not going to fit that into this uh, video. However, then we're talking about land. Now, this is the big, big, big issue in regards to stocking. Now, I can be a little bit biased here. It's my video, it's my channel, whatever. I do sell stocking, I do sell days out, I do sell guided and unguided stocking and I sell syndicate places. Now syndicate places are great and I do suggest that if any new stalker if they want to get into it and they want some formal education and a little bit idea of what's going on in the world and legislation and and most of all, if you want to be able to sell your deer and maybe you shop, you want to keep one for the pot and one to the game dealer, then a DSC qualification, your DSC1 or your DMQ1 uh, with big game handling is a probable must for any new stalkers. It gives you an idea of the laws, 
off the licensing laws, caliber laws, and your food hygiene laws and stuff like that when having to deal with carcasses and carcass preparation. It'll also talk to you about shop placement and it'll take a lot of the stuff, a lot of the questions that you you may pick up here and there and if you're one of these guys that doesn't really get a chance to have a mentor or somebody spending time with you teaching you how to stock and things, a DSC course is a very handy course. Now, you would also need that if you were to take on a syndicate place. If you wanted a, a deer syndicate place, even a cheap one on a small block with five, four or five guys, then you are going to need some of those qualifications. So think about that. Another thing about land is that you must have it certified in some places, some counties in England and some places in Scotland, the local police have to certify that land for a certain calibre. Now, that can be a bit of an issue um, because as a new shooter, you'll probably either, in some places now, you'll be asked to have a mentor or you'll have a closed ticket uh, where you're only allowed to shoot in a certain place or the land that you have got permission on might only be um, might only be suitable for a cer certain calibre in regards to that police force. So you've got to think about that before you go think about this whole stocking site. Another ideal thing is take cheap day stocks. Now, when I say cheap day stocks, I am not talking about contacting your biggest state and saying, look, uh, I want to go and shoot a stag. Because you're going to get quoted prices from up to about a thousand pounds just for the day and the experience. Now that's nowhere near the budget we're talking about here. We're talking about you buying a rifle at, at 150 to 300 pounds or a whole package for uh, with rifle scope and moderator for under a thousand pounds. If we're talking about that kind of budget and a pair of binoculars for under a hundred pounds, then you're not going to have the money to go and spend a thousand pound with a whole heap of hit, hidden charges. Trust me, the, the estates can be a minefield of charges. Charges for a uh, poor shot placement, charges for taking a shot, charges for misses, char uh, tips for the ghillie or the gamekeeper, all sorts. There's, there's, um, and they do play on the adrenaline. They do play the sales. You could be lying on the hill and you've booked an eight pointer day. You've come into a herd and the, the, the gilly or the guy or the guide that's with you will turn around and say, if you want that big beast, that's uh, another 1,500 pounds. And, they, and your brain's thinking, well, have I got 1,500 pounds to spend? And it's like, oh, see, no. That kind of hidden cost shooting is not what you want to get into if you want to get into this kind of recreationally on a long term period. So what you want to aim to is either have your own property that you can shoot on and if you don't you want to do short stocks. You want to talk to guys who do road deer stocks for five, four or five hours either morning or evening um, and there's a lot of guys that do it all over the country. I do it myself for about £80 a morning or £80 an evening and that gives you the experience and the feet on the ground of learning from an experienced guide on how to stock into deer and stuff like that. So that is that kind of eighty pound is quite wor uh, quite worth it. Longer days on shorter stocks, for instance, up to about one hundred and eighty pounds and things like that. That is the type of day you're kind of looking at if you're on a budget. If you do manage to go through your DSC, then I do suggest find a syndicate placement. It's not always easy to find a syndicate placement close close to where you stay. In fact, the more people who shoot in your area, the less likely you're going to get land. So the less likely you're going to get in a syndicate place because the guys with all the money, they're the ones who are going to take up the places. So just be the uh, bear that in mind. Also, I'll talk a little bit about syndicates because uh, there's a bit of confusion about syndicates. Now there is syndicates are managed differently elsewhere so look at the paperwork speak to the syndicate manager of that particular area that you're planning to go on and try and get as much information as possible it's not always easy for that manager to take, give you all the information he can give because if you come out with some stuff that is just nothing to do with the syndicate at all then you are 
then he's not going to be able to help you. And, and as a syndicate manager, I, I, I fall into that trap in a lot of times where I've given all the information I could possibly give on, on an advert and people are just not reading the advert. That's a big thing. Read the advert. Do not just see syndicate in such and such a place and look through and quick glance the advert. You have to look at every bit of the advert. If there's rules that you might not agree with, if there's a price that you don't agree with, if it's an area. Now, the amount of people I've said, uh, that, I've, um, that have come to me saying, oh, I'd like to get uh, on that syndicate place you've got in Sunderland when I'm actually selling it in Sutherland. You know, the... The, it, it, it's they're 500 miles apart you, you cannot geographically um, understand how frustrating that can be for when I'm speaking to a guy for 2-3 days giving him all the information and then he realises oh wait a minute I'm 8 hours drive from you and I can't I, I don't have that kind of time well you've just wasted our day my day and your day uh, and maybe three days off your time answering emails back and forwards or time on the phone when it could have been cleared that I can't go to Inverness or I can't go to the Isle of Arran or I can't go to Aberdeenshire and stuff because I stay too far away. So look at the advert, look at the location, think about all your, uh, what, it, what you're wanting to get from it and then decide if you're going to apply for a syndicate place. Now, there's usually other restrictions in regards to it. Another thing, as a newbie stalker, you must get insurance. Pick your insurance company. They're all pretty much the same. Uh, Saks, Basque, um, uh, oh, what's the other one? Not Deer Commission, what's um, British Deer Society, BDS, um, um, Scottish Gamekeepers, or whatever. Pick your insurance and your organization to deal with. It is absolutely foolhardy in this day and age, if you're going to be a firearms holder, not to be involved with one of these organizations. You can get them for a lot, uh, for as little as a couple of pounds a month. Now, I do suggest if you're going to be dealing with deer and you want to um, go through your DSC and you want to do more stocking and get properly into it and stuff, you need an insurance company that will offer you that £10 million liability because a lot of people who are offering out either syndicates or or unaccompanied stocking and things require that £10 million liability cover. So I do suggest, you, again, you can shop around. Some of the bigger ones, as, as I said, Basque, I'm a member of Basque, Saks, Scottish Gamekeepers, various others. Yes, keep an eye on that. So, I think I've kind of covered most of the things in regards to stalking and equipment. Oh, knife. Yes, yeah, so, you need a knife. You don't need an expensive knife. You don't need a, a overly expensive, uber beautiful knife with rosewood handle and um, whatever steel it is, uh, W1 steel that is sharpened to an edge of a, um, to a razor edge or whatever. I use a standard everyday Mora companion knife and I might go through two or three a year but I shoot a heck of a lot of deer and but they're sharpenable and over time now if you're you're talking about ten pound a knife here we're not talking we're not talking 150 to 200 pound like some of the custom knives that are floating about now yeah if you've got that kind of money but we're not talking we're not talking guys with an infinite budget again a knife so, oh, and a cheap laser range finder. You can find these for under about 60 or 70 quid. Anything up to about 400 metres would be ideal for stocking. That's ideal. Um, it's always good to know your range. Um, just because once you get used to things, you'll realise you can't tell the range through your scope. It's almost impossible unless you've got a range finder on your scope or whatever. It's almost impossible. Even the ones with the, uh, the reticles, the range finding reticles and stuff like that are are not accurate um, on different species of animals and stuff. So, and you have to put extra lot, a, a lot more effort into the research, into your scope and things. So a cheap laser range finder, you can pick them up. Hawks do one, Bressers do one, Bushnell do one, lots of them do them. And you can get them anywhere from 
50 pounds straight up to three four hundred pounds you can um, but most of them are used for golf ones are quite good as well so a cheap one of them so clothing don't go expensive rifle don't need to go expensive even a package binoculars again don't need to go expensive knife again don't need to go expensive um range finder again not expensive boots invest in a good pair i would suggest always suggest the i, I suggest bester they're about 210 pounds but if you don't have that budget look at your army surplus and and do a bit of shopping around because i can guarantee you you'll pick up something that is good and waterproof that'll do you for your stocking um and i think i've more or less covered everything in regards to, and, and and your land but remember you do have the offers of um, short stocks and stuff that are quite good. So, hey land. I hope that's kind of explained stocking for a newbie. And uh, I'll show you some pictures and stuff like that just to kind of fill in the rest of the video. But any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to ask stalkers. Be mindful of some of them do have a larger, may have a larger budget than you. But don't be afraid to coming into the industry. Don't be afraid because the money, it, the money is not always the be all and end all. You can pick up cheap and free or, and free stuff from various people. And once you get into the community, there'll be so many people that want to help you. Trust me. And even getting the odd free day stocking and things like that with your mates, just get involved. It's ideal. It's an ideal community. There is pains in the backsides in the community like any other community, but most of them will genuinely help you out. Thank you for watching Field Sports Scotland. Don't hesitate to contact me with any questions and subscribe to my channel for future reviews and stuff like that on equipment. Thank you again.